everyone, we are in Paris. Welcome to Places to Go. When we think about traveling to Europe, there is a specific place that goes through our minds. That place is Paris. Yes, I know, the same thing happened to me. It is nothing more than the dream of thousands and thousands of people around the world. Everyone wants to visit the city of love. This city is a global center for art, fashion, gastronomy, and culture. Its 19th century cityscape is crossed by wide boulevards and of course, the River Seine. This river is an important commercial waterway within the Paris Basin in the north of France. Beyond such amazing landmarks as the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre Museum, the city is known for its cafe culture and designer boutique. Let's get started! We decided to leave our bags at the Airbnb, which was located an hour and 20 minutes from the airport. It seems a lot, but it really wasn't. We got very distracted discovering a bit of Paris as we drove through the city. Our Airbnb was at Avenue de la République five minutes from the Paris Chambers. This apartment had a unique style, very French I would say. It had a petite kitchen and bathroom that made it very particular. The rooms were nicely decorated with paintings and comfy beds. It felt like home. After getting settled, we decided to get ready and start exploring the city. Before getting to know this beautiful place, we're going to have lunch at this cafe behind me that's near the catacombs. It was time to have lunch, so we went to a restaurant near the catacombs area named Café du Renbus. It had an excellent menu selection with typical French food and delicious wine. Bon appétit! This area is very crowded. There are people everywhere, on their skateboards, bicycles, or walking to different places. It is surrounded by cafes and bakeries. It's perfect to spend the afternoon enjoying a cup of wine or a baguette. Coming to France and not getting a piece of bread is like coming to Paris and not seeing the Eiffel Tower. Speaking of which, when in Paris, make sure you're not on a diet. As a nation of food lovers, you will be forced to try their bread, pastries, macarons, and more. Chocolate, vanilla, croissant, baguette. I mean, like, what else can you ask for? The French government has very specific guidelines for defining and regulating the beloved baguette. A baguette must weigh between 250 to 300 grams, measure between 55 and 65 centimeters in length, and can only contain four ingredients, flour, salt, yeast, and water. Lastly, they are price controlled. So we're about to start an awesome day here in Paris, but first, let's have crepes. Crepes originated from a northwest region of modern France called Brittany. Back then, the crepes were more often used as an everyday bread. 
Around the 12th century, buckwheat was introduced to the region and became the main ingredient. Almost everyone in France has a crepe griddle to cook and make a number of crepes during the week or on Sundays as a big family meal. Let's start with our journey. Our first stop of the day was going to be the Louvre Museum. But we realized that although it was still early, there was already a long line. So we booked our tickets online and decided to return later. Right now we are at the Louvre Museum and it's like about an hour and a half line so we can go in. So make sure if you're coming here and it's your first time, you have to book your tickets online. You really want to avoid this. The ticket to enter the museum costs 60 euros per person. Meanwhile, we went to tour around the Tuileries Garden. If you want to fall in love with Paris, make sure to come to the Tuileries Garden. It is amazing. There are lots of flowers, lots of people, and it's just a beautiful place. This is a public garden located between the Louvre and the Palace of de la Concorde created by Catherine de' Medici as the Garden of the Tuileries Palace in 1564. It was eventually opened to the public in 1667 and became a public park after the French Revolution. It was a place where Parisians celebrated, met, strolled, and relaxed. I have to say that I got carried away by the charm of its flowers. After walking around the garden, another cool thing that you can do is just sit and have a glass of wine. After spending some time in the garden, I wanted to go and see the bridge where sweethearts inscribe their names or initials on a padlock and attach it to a structure and throw away the key. This lock used to adorn the Pont des Arts, the footbridge that crosses the Seine from the left bank to the Louvre. Right now, I'm on top of the Seine River. This bridge is called the Bridge of Art, where lots of lovers used to come and put locks all over the place. It was a symbol of love. Several years ago, following political discussions about whether the locks were an eyesore or detrimental to the integrity of the city's architecture, the Pont des Arts was mysteriously cleared one night and the locks were gone. You can still see a few, but the city has tried to keep the place clean and organized. Even though the logs are not here anymore, people want to keep that tradition and they're putting new ones in the Carousel Bridge that's a few blocks away. The Louvre is the world's largest art museum and a historic monument in Paris, welcoming approximately 9.3 million visitors per year. The reason for its popularity is its collection of 35,000 priceless masterpieces and antiques. This place is so huge that it is humanly impossible to see what all the museum has to offer in one visit. How long would it take you? Well, the museum offers 308,000 pieces in total, but not all of the collection is exhibited to the public, so it will take you forever. The Louvre's glass pyramid was built in 1989 and is 21 meters high. It is made only of glass and metal and is now one of the city's most amazing landmarks. However, caused a fair bit of controversy, as the architect, I am Pei, was the first non-French architect to work on the Louvre. I have to say this place is huge. The Musée of Louvre is the biggest museum in the world, so make sure if you're gonna come, take three, four hours of your day and enjoy this place. We're 
actually gonna try to see the Mona Lisa, but as you can see, it's very crowded. Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa is without a doubt one of the most famous pieces of art in the Louvre, with people from all walks of life traveling to the museum to catch a glimpse of the world's famous painting. What you may not know about the Mona Lisa is that it isn't as big as everyone thinks. The Mona Lisa also has its own bodyguards and is protected by bulletproof glass. After several hours walking around the city, it was necessary to rest and have lunch in a typical Parisian place. Bon Appetit! Unfortunately, the day we got into Paris, there was a huge fire on the Notre Dame Cathedral. Before, you could be able to just go through this way and get to the cathedral. We don't really know when they're going to open it back up. The most cherished pieces of this cathedral were the two pipe organs and its three 13th century rose windows, which thankfully suffer little to no damage. Whether you're an art lover or not, Musée d'Orsay is well worth including in your itinerary. This museum holds French art dating from 1848 to 1914, including paintings, sculptures, furniture, and photography. Musée d'Orsay is the fifth most visited site in France. Right now, we are at the Musée d'Orsay, where you can find a lot of art, a lot of history, and of course, just enjoy of this museum. It houses the largest collection of Impressionist and Post-Impressionist masterpieces in the world by painters including Monet, Manet, and Van Gogh. After delighting myself with art, we discovered that the Musée d'Orsay was once a train station. Yeah. You heard right, it was once a train station. In the 19th century, Paris hosted the Universal Exhibition. The objective of this was to showcase the achievements of the last hundred years. More than 50 million visitors visited Paris during the exhibition. Since the French government had foreseen such a huge crowd, they decided to build a train station. This station was to help the visitors travel to the Universal Exhibition. Gare d'Orsay was the first electrified urban rail terminal in the world. More than 75 years later, this train station would end up becoming Musée d'Orsay. I know, we have visited many places, but we still lack the most emblematic of this city. I'm talking about the Eiffel Tower. I'm finally seeing it with my own eyes and it's beautiful. This place has an energy like no other. Of course, if you're here in Paris, you have to come and visit the Eiffel Tower. It's beautiful. Lots of people come, have a glass of wine, enjoy and have fun. The Eiffel Tower is a wrought iron lattice tower on the Champ de Mars in Paris. It is named after the engineer Gustave Eiffel, whose company designed and built the tower. Constructed from 1887 to 1889 as the entrance to the 1889 World's Fair, it was initially criticized by some of France's leading artists and intellectuals for its design, but it has become a global cultural icon of France and one of the most important structures in the world. As a small tip, if you have time to spend several hours here, bring things to have a picnic in the park. You can drink wine, listen to music, and enjoy the breathtaking view. We are at the Catacombs in Paris, a really, really cool place to see, but it's 9 a.m. and this place opens at 10 and there's already a huge line to go, so yep. it's gonna take forever. Yep. 
If you dare to visit the catacombs, the ticket will have a fee of 30 euros per person. The catacombs of Paris are underground auguries which hold the remains of more than 6 million people in a small part of a tunnel network built to consolidate Paris' ancient stone mines. The history of the catacombs starts in the late 18th century when major public health problems tied to the city's cemeteries led to a decision to transfer their contents to an underground site. It's cold and very scary, but it's worth doing the tour. This is the weirdest feeling ever. Like I'm surrounded by skulls and bones and it's creepy and it's cold and it's an interesting experience. actually exits you to a really calm place in Paris which is very weird because we were just like down below at the catacombs where it was weird it was creepy and now you're just like enjoying Paris again although we have seen a lot of the Paris culture we still need to go and see a place that looks like a movie I'm talking about Montmartre We are in Montmartre. In the 18th century, lots of notable artists used to live and work here because the atmosphere was just amazing. Montmartre is talked about by Parisians the way New Yorkers talk about the village. This area is the most romantic and awesome place you'll find in the city. Its narrow alleys, windmills, little details in its soul are some of the things that make Montmartre so unique. A walk here is truly a one-of-a-kind experience. It's a walk you won't be forgetting anytime soon. Here, you will quickly understand how it has inspired so many artists such as Picasso and Van Gogh. As you walk up the hill, you need to look at the buildings, the walls, every corner, because here you are likely to find many surprises everywhere. Approaching towards the end of our visit, but we still lack one of the most beautiful and important places in the city. Now we are at the Arc of Triomphe. The Arc de Triomphe is one of the most famous monuments in Paris. It honors those who fought and died for France in the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. This place is full of memory and respect for those who have passed. At 164 feet high by 148 feet wide, it's the second largest triumphal arc standing today and was the largest until 1982, when North Korea unveiled its Arc of Triumph. If you're wondering how many triumphal arcs can there be, the answer is quite a few. A lot of people when they come the first time to Paris don't really know that to get to the Arc of Triumph there are stairs underground because it's very dangerous to cross the roundabout. As many countries do, France has a tomb of the unknown soldier and this tomb happens to be under the Arc de Triomphe. The unknown soldier has been there since November 10, 1920 and lies under the inscription 
Here lies a French soldier who died for his fatherland, 1914-1918. At that time, an eternal flame was lit to honor those who had fallen during the war. As you can see, the flame is always alive because they're honoring one of the soldiers that fought that war. The ticket to get in the Ark costs around $15 per person. It's really worth a climb to the top, just for the view down the tree-lined Champs Elysees toward Place de la Concorde in the Louvre Museum. There's no better way to appreciate just how grand and impressive this street is than from above. Paris is like a fairy tale dream. The art, colors, music, and food are simply romantic, and the mix of all these make you feel such a unique sensation that I honestly cannot explain in words. If you still haven't visited the city of love, it must become a can't miss city in your bucket list. After all, we all have places to go.